On Sunday, a policeman was martyred and three others injured when their vehicle, part of a convoy escorting dignitaries from 12 countries, was caught in an explosion on Malam Jaba Road in Swat District, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. Swat Dig Muhammad Ali Khan confirmed that the blast was caused by a remote-controlled IED. All ambassadors remained safe and were shifted to a secure location. The Russian embassy reported that the convoy's lead vehicle hit a mine. Khyber Pakhtunkhwa Governor Faisal Karim Kundi condemned the attack criticizing the provincial government for failing to curb terrorism. The region has seen a rise in attacks against security forces, especially since the tariq i Taliban broke a ceasefire in 2022. Meanwhile, Minister for Petroleum Dr. Musadik Malik led a delegation of Pakistani energy firms to the 8th Silk Route Expo in China aiming to enhance energy partnerships. He reaffirmed Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif's commitment to explore new reserves, planning to excavate around 240 sites over three years, with an investment of $5 billion. The discussion centered on refining upgrades and sustainable energy production, highlighting Pakistan's coal reserves and ambitions for green hydrogen initiatives. In economic news, the State Bank of Pakistan announced a record profit of 3.4 trillion rupees for FY24 significantly bolstering the government's finances. This profit allows the government to manage its substantial debt servicing obligations, despite the challenges posed by high interest rates. The SBP's success reflects improvements in government liquidity and economic stability. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu warned Hezbollah that Israel had struck the group in unprecedented ways following intensified cross-border attacks. The violence prompted the U.S. State Department to urge Americans in Lebanon to leave due to the escalating conflict between Israel and Hezbollah. In Lebanon, Hezbollah's deputy leader declared an open-ended battle with Israel after the death of a top commander in Israeli airstrikes. Meanwhile, Gaza remains heavily bombarded, with the death toll surpassing 41,000, according to Gaza's health ministry. Internet services have been disrupted amid the strikes. As the conflict expands, calls for a ceasefire have grown louder, with the European Union and UK Foreign Secretary David Lammy urging for immediate de-escalation. Yet, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres expressed frustration, noting that neither Israel nor Hamas appeared interested in a ceasefire, prolonging the violence. Further complicating the situation, the Houthis in Yemen have vowed to support Palestinians by launching missiles at Israel, contributing to rising regional tensions. At least 41,431 people have been killed and 95,818 injured in Israel's war on Gaza. Anira Kumara Dasanayaki has won the presidential election in Sri Lanka, securing 42.31% of the vote, as announced by the Election Commission. The leader of the People's Liberation Front Alliance, Dasanayaki triumphed over opposition leader Sajith Premadasa, who received 32.76% while outgoing President Renil Wickram Singhi garnered just 17.27%. This election marked a historic moment, as it required a second round of counting due to none of the candidates achieving the necessary 50% of votes. Dasanayaki is set to be sworn in on Monday in Colombo. In his victory speech, he called for unity among all Sri Lankans and emphasized that the achievement belongs to the collective effort of the people. He expressed gratitude for the support received during his campaign. Analysts note Dasanayaki's charisma and vitality, highlighting his promises to tackle corruption, a key concern among voters. His appeal lies in his position as an outsider to the traditional political landscape, offering hope for change in a country burdened by a history of corruption.